All right, it's time to quick speed shop. I'm back in the shop working on brown dodge. We're doing things like putting offenders on and doing some other monkeying around. And uh, I think I'm gonna get out the paintbrush like Bob Ross and do some happy tree action on it. So uh, let's get into it. Well, hey guys, welcome back to the quick speed shop. I'm Josh and I'm working on my brown dodge again today. We gotta hook this thing up and make it go. And the way to do that is put the rear drive shaft in it. Look at my drive shaft holding steel. I got this out of the dumpster and it's perfect for holding drive shafts. So why can't I just go ahead and uh, slap the drive shaft back in like we took the drive train out of a truck and put it back together? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I swapped rear ends. I got a Dana 60 in here. Uh, the truck came with a Dana 60, but this is a modern Dana 60 with the modern style brakes. This is out of a 98 Ford E350 Econoline van. And you'll see the yoke there has got a four bolt flange yoke. And the original drive shaft and the Dana 60 yoke used a regular U joint, but that bolted right in the rear end. So here is the flange for the Dana 60. So you're like, figure, well, why don't we just swap it on? Well, here's why. Take the tape off and try not to have this fall everywhere. See the size of these caps here? Now look at the size of these caps. I don't know if you can tell, but these caps are smaller, these caps are bigger. Also, this is an external cap yoke. This is an internal clip yoke. And the drive shaft company that I usually use, their shop I wrote by the other day, they're out of business. I don't know if they moved or what happened, but I gotta figure it out on my own. So I had to go on the interwebs and uh, came up with a solution, check it out. So this, this size you join is a 1310 and the you join in here is a 1350, which is bigger. So look at this, Moog makes a 1310 to 1350 adapter U joint. And here is the part number, uh, 447. <clears throat> Believe it or not, they had this at Advanced Auto Parts on the shelf, but it looks like somebody might have ordered it in special and didn't take it. Yeah, it's somebody's name on it there. So it was on the shelf and I looked it up and bam, it was there. So it comes with internal and external clips. And here is the U-joint. It's got the 1350 caps in one end, external clip, and it's got the 1310 internal clip uh, caps on the other end. So this will go right in our drive shaft. Let's see, like this. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I've been lied to. Oh no, why is this? This yoke is way too narrow. Oh no, what the heck, bro? Okay, I figured out what we got going on here. This is called a companion flange, and it's for the Dana 60 on my, out of my 98 Ford van. It's got a two inch pilot bearing, bushing, and then this four, four something inch diameter bolt pattern. And I'm pretty sure it's a 1350 style U joint here. This drive shaft is a 7260, it's a Mopar. <laughs> Uh, U joint they put in the eight and three quarters and the apparently the Dodge Dana 60 in the 70s. It's a 7260, which is smaller than a 1350 or a 1310. It's a Detroit 7260. So it's a really small U joint. And nobody, they make adapters if you wanted to run a 1310. They make a Spicer 1310 yoke that'll bolt onto the Ford Companion. I think that was in the. Uh, the 8.8s and stuff like that. So you could get this if you wanted to run a 1310 U-joint, but nobody makes one of these for 7260. So I spent the last like hour and a half on my phone trying to research and figure out what is going on. I got calipers out. It's like doing the science and the math, but ah, uh, dang it. I have like a whole pile of drive shafts. None of them have this tiny 7260 U-joint. They're all 1310, 1350s. I've got a brand new Chevy van drive shaft but it's 1350s, it's huge, or something bigger than that. It's might be 1410 or whatever it is. It's freaking huge. So uh, none of that's going to work. I'm going to have to be stuck with this. I even tried to solve my problem here. I've got this dry shaft. It came out of a Chevy van that was uh, parted out to build like electric conversion thing or majig at work or something. So it's brand new. It's got the 1350 yoke at the end of it. It's got a slip yoke at the end. It's brand new. It's, but it's way too long, so I thought maybe I could swap the yokes on the front of these if they're the same spline and then have the drive shaft shortened because then I would get a new tube and everything else and just have to pay to get it shortened. But then 
and went on the internet some more digging, digging, digging. I had the shovel out, digging all the way. And I found on eBay, of all places, a guy that sells a Detroit 7260 by 1350 U joint for it's uh, 60 bucks for shipping. So that'll have the tiny little 7260 dimension by the big 1350 cap. So I can now use my companion flange with the 7260 to 1350 conversion U joint. So I can put this flange right on the drive shaft like that. And hey, guess what? 7260, if it's good enough for, for Mopar, it's good enough for me. They ran four speeds and eight three quarters and everything else with a 7260 for years and years and years, beating and banging. So if they can do it, I can do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to blast this apart, clean up this yoke, and uh, I'll put this guy back in the box and save him for a future day. But now we can go right from here to here. Crisis averted, hopefully. All right, while well, I'm waiting for the U-joint to come in, my order from Eastwood came in to touch up the sides of the wheel walls of the box. I got some Rust Encapsulator Plus in flat black, and then I got some Rust Converter. So I used the Eastwood off camera. I just did it. It was dusty and loud, but I used the SCT and this real spindly drum to sand the uh, rust here. And I've knocked a lot, all the loose scale off. And you can see there's some bare metal here. And a lot of, all the loose stuff is gone. So I'm gonna spray this now with rust encapsulator, or I'm sorry, rust converter here, liquid rust converter. And it should turn to a black substance like that when it converts all the rust. So I'm just gonna spray it on here on this area. And then it's got to dry for, uh, I think, 48 hours. And then we'll top coat it with a Rust Encapsulator Plus, paint all this black in here, and it should lock all this surface rust in. I mean, you can see there's, it was through there, but most of this is just surface rust. Obviously, the best way would have been to sandblast this off here, but since my blaster is not functional very good, and um, I didn't want to just get the whole panel sandblasted because I want the paint on the outside of it. This is this was the best scenario I have to work with. So we'll convert it with this, then encapsulate it, and it should lock most of the rust in there. It'll last for a while. If you're doing like a full-on show car, this might not be the very best solution, but for what we're doing, it's going to be fine. I think I can just... Oh, there we go. I'm just going to fog her on here and... Uh... I'll use a rag to wipe it off where I'm, I'm getting it everywhere. This should, we should start to see it turn black soon. Actually, I want to get like a paintbrush or something and... Or a rag. Got it everywhere. Where's my rag? Ah. I had a rag. Where is it? Oh no. Lost it. Actually, I'll use this rag to. Oh. Let's try to work it into everywhere here. Okay, I used the rag. I wiped all that excess off. I had way too much on here. I wasn't used to using the spray bottle. Usually I have an aerosol can or I brush it on, but I've wiped all the excess off. It's already starting to turn black. The rust is starting to turn dark colors here. So I'm just gonna let it sit for the 48 hours or whatever till it dries up and converts all this, all the exposed uh, rust. And then we'll hit it with the rust encapsulator all right, through a little movie magic, the correct U-joint for what we got to do is show it up. This is that one I just ordered on eBay. It's a 7260 by 1350. So we can go ahead and Kirk place this guy in here. And then I cleaned up the companion flange and shot a little black on it here. And then this guy will go right in here and make up that. Uh this side and we can put the companion flange 
right onto the drive shaft and bolt her up in there. So I've got to tap the internal clips out of this side. I got to tap this uh, U-joint out, clean this up, and then we'll put. I think we'll put the U-joint in here first, and then we'll put the companion flange on here. Got it. Boom. There we go. This almost seems like this cap has a rid. No, it should. It should want to tap through. Don't usually want to tap on a cap like that, but that's what I had to do. Okay, don't want to lose the. This joint is still kind of good, so don't really want to lose my needle bearings. go boom there we go roll that guy right out of there yeah this this thing had just been replaced not too long ago this had been at the drive shaft shop so we're going to put it right back together and we'll save our 7260 now i just want to compare here we're going to hold her up and take a look okay now we're just going to Put this back in here just like the way we took it apart. I gotta take the cap off and not lose the needle bearings. Take this cap off and not lose the needle bearings. Place this guy. Uh oh, place this guy in here. Why now? Won't it go? Hmm. Hmm. Why won't you go? Okay, I used the grinder and I sculpted it ever so slightly, just for a little relief. I mean, this is forged. You can see the forge line. So it took just a little bit out of it. And now, ba boom, it goes in there. So that was, uh, that was a little nerve wracking, but got her to go. So now, I can place her caps uh, careful I think the best way I'm not going to carry you guys over there but I'm gonna squeeze this in the vise and squeeze these together. Here, should be able to use the vise and draw these in. Inside's going. Why won't the other side go in there? Okay, I got it. I just had to tap the uh, caps just a little bit. The U joint. I already got the one clip on the one end. This one should go right in here now. Boom, like that. Whew! That made me a little, little nervous. All right, we got our got our 7260 side engaged. Nice. Okay, now. Just need to do the same thing for the yoke here, the companion flange, I should say. Okay. That is most of the way in there. It gives me enough room to get this guy started. Like that. Now these are the external clips, so I need to knock them down in there enough to get the uh, get the external clips seated. Okay. 
Okay. And these guys are like little snap rings that go in here. And you snap ring it in the place. Starting to just trying to. Just trying to get under there. that rust encapsulator from plus by eastwood and you saw me do the uh, inner wheel wells here i cleaned them up the other day and then put on the rust converter and then two coats of rust encapsulator so that's drying the inside of the fenders got a good coat and i put uh, two coats on the edges here where they bolt on so this is the green guy here so this is drying and then the other side is the same way over here it's drying on over here looks good and this will be good inside the wheel wells black everything all out and this dries to a matte finish like you kind of see here and fluid film when i fluid film these fenders it'll stick to that matte finish really well and i'm also over here since we did the u-joints painted the drive shaft two coats of encapsulator on the drive shaft so this guy is now ready to install good to go here we'll just let that dry a little bit longer probably overnight and uh but it looks good though all restored so once this paint is dry i want to put the fenders on uh, permanently here because there's no reason not to but i want to get the buffer out and i want to rub out the paint on the box especially over the fenders you see how horrendous this is so this like algae and stuff whatever that is and i want to take the buffer and buff this out a little bit here we've got some decals that are going to go on here we'll see in a little while but I went into my stash of Super Clean, and I don't have any cleaner left, but I had some wheel cleaner. And I just tried it here. Oops, the light is turned. Hold on a second so you can see. I tried it on the paint. It doesn't appear to hurt the paint at all, so it's, uh, I'm going to spray it on here and use it just to clean off the box, sides, and then uh, <clears throat> it will, uh, you can see how shiny the paint is, but I do want to, Maybe if it cleans up this good, we don't need to rub it out over the top of the fender, man, if it stays. I mean, it's really protected here. But I do want to get the fenders on ASAP so we can continue doing things like build a bumper and stuff. Shall I just take a little spritz and I... Oh, I spritz her on like that, but I don't let it run onto my black paint, which is still drying. And I just kind of scrub. Scrub like that, and that wheel cleaner takes all that algae right off. Ooh, it's grungy. And then, uh... I 
I mean, the paint is not faded very much being over the top of the fenders because they were kind of in a protected way, but it would be good to... Where's my other rag? Oh, I lost it. Dang it. Aha! It might be good to rub it out anyways just, just for happenstance. But... Yeah, there's some chalkiness in the paint, but it comes out pretty good. Oop. Don't get on the new paint yet. Ah, rushing all the, rushing it. That's good enough. Yeah, that black is it's dried enough where it's not getting on it. And this ticks the grunge right off her. That paint's like brand new, except not, but close enough, kind of. Man, that Sunfire Brown Metallic is really shining through. I got the rust converter on here and it reacted with this stuff and it's made like kind of impenetrable goo on there. Maybe it'll buff off. But once you get the fender on there, it is what it is. We're going to have to deal with it. But this is cleaning up not too bad. Okay, I got some fresh micro towel action here that I had kicking around. And I got some uh, Meguiar's cutting compound. And then we got uh, polish. So I think we can just do a little bit of rubbing with the compound here. Just got a little bit on the rag here. Let's see. We can do some compound in here. Now this is a little hard to do because we're right by this rattle can action, but we'll put a little polish on here. Do some deep cutting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can already tell on it, so I get to the buffer, I'm gonna need some more goo. My left hand, my right. Shoulder is worn out from years of work at work, 20 years of work, and it's been bothering me, so I can't rub with my right arm. I gotta rub with my left arm. So let's wipe this and see what it looks like. I'll get out of the way of the light in a second. Because I can't see nothing either. shiny. That is shiny. Well, that doesn't look too bad. Ooh, that's fancy. That's nice. So I'm going to just go ahead and rub both both of these over where the fenders go. You know, just this area here just to get around the fenders. I'll do the back and do it here. I'm almost thinking with the fenders off, it'd be easier to put the decals on right now as well. Put our Snow Commander decals on. I'll show you those in a second, I guess, because there shouldn't be any more paint work going on here. And we could uh, attach them. Okay, with everything rubbed out, I got polished both sides. I actually, I did the tops of the fenders too, where they're gonna bolt on, even though it's hard to tell because they're crunchy. We're ready to bolt the fenders on. I did go and buy a hardware kit from uh, DCM Classics. Let's see here. Right there, DCM Classics. And it wasn't cheap, $140 for this hardware kit, but you get new uh, spacers here. Like here's what the original stuff looked like. They're painted, you know, all steel that gets rusty. These, the spacers are stainless steel and then you get regular hardware. You can buy stainless hardware, but it was even more money, so 
Figured $125, you know, 140 with shipping was plenty. So I just got the zinc coated hardware. If I put some anti-seize on it, all this stuff's gonna get anti-seize and then these are stainless and then the truck's gonna get fluid filmed too. So I'm not too worried about it rusting away again. But we are ready to install the fender. I've got a bolt here taped in from the backside to hold it. I got a bolt down here. So let me hang you guys on something to watch and then uh, we'll bolt the fenders on. Oh, I changed my mind on the stickers. The decals are going to put those on after the truck's almost done. I don't want something to happen to them like grinding splatter. They're really expensive. I think like over a hundred bucks. They say Snow Commander reflective. I don't want to ruin them. So we'll wait to the very end to put them on. Of course, we'll start with the best fender ever, the green fender. Here it comes. Hoop. Of course, I put fluid film on the edge of it beforehand where it's going to bolt on. So we get fluid film between the what do you call it? And the other, what do you call it? There goes the paint. Where's the lower bolt hole? I can't see nothing. Oh, got to kneel down here, I guess. Where is this bolt? Right there. Get in there. Boom. Boom. And that bolt. Boom. All right, that'll stay there for two seconds. Let me get some uh, spacer and a nut and a washer. Hoop. Can't see nothing. You know what I forgot? I got too excited. Right here where the fender there's like dum-dum that goes in here. They had like, like caulking. And I'm going to use a window window weld, uh, call it dum-dum, like the window glue. I'm going to put a little bead of that in here to help fill these gaps up or else mud will shoot between them um, all the way here and here. I can do it right now before the fender's tightened down, but you get the idea. Uh-oh. The black paint is up above the fender a little bit. Uh-oh. Well, it is what it is. You can see the beauty of this green. Look at that, the green metallic. Where I uh, rubbed it out by hand really fast. And look at the shine. This truck, the green truck was a neat looking truck too. I mean, this is, these both are really interesting colors. That gold metallic and then that green metallic. It's freaking gorgeous. But we'll rub the rest of this out with a buffer when we do all that. But you can see I got it started. I'm going to go ahead and just work my way around. Um, all the bolts here, the holes are big, but so I'll put them all in loose and then I'll wiggle the fender around and get everything centered up and then tighten them down all at once here. All right, bam, I got the fenders both mounted on. Look at that shine of that green, metallics, mint. I got the brown fender on too, got that rubbed out on top and uh, fenders are looking mint. Look at that tire to fender gap, this thing's awesome. Way up in the air, whoa, way up in the air. All right. Well, bam, that's it here. It's a couple hours later after I was doing what I was doing. I forget, the video got kind of long on me. Not gonna lie, I started editing it and I had to go in and cha chop it off. -cha chop it down into, a, cause it was getting way out of control. And so we're gonna end it right here. Scene. So the fenders are on and oh, by the way, look over here, next video, snow plows in, it's already blown apart. I'll show you how that's going to happen. I got to get it to the sandblaster for the uh, sandblaster to sandblast, obviously. And then uh, he'll be putting primer on it for me too. But that's it. Bam, fender's on. Truck's over here out of the way. And uh, next time you'll see that snow plow and whatever else I got figured out to put on the end of that video, which I cut off of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment. We'll see you next time. Bam, here at the Quick Speed Shop.